Welcome to Beware of Spoilers. I am Adam. Happy Passover. Happy in between Good Friday and Easter. I feel like it should be called like Holy Saturday or something. The day where not too much happened. I don't pretend to be a uh, religious scholar in any way. Um, and that's not what this is about either. Um, but Easter's tomorrow. Happy Easter. Um, so... It's Earth Day, though. It is, uh, 420, um, uh, April 20th, um, Earth Day. So, uh, I had work this morning, and I was going to go to the movies after, um, and I saw that it was opening weekend for a, uh, I, I don't even want to call it a, I don't know if we'd call it a documentary, because I just saw it for the first time. I've never seen a, a movie. I'm, I'm talking about Disney Nature Penguins. I've never seen any of the Disney Nature movies before. I've never had African cats, flamingos, uh, birds of some kind, you know, all these kind of things about, you know, things like that. And I went into it expecting, expecting like, a, a documentary, like March of the Penguin, something like that. Um, it's kind of a narrative story using actual unscripted animals and untrained animals. Um, it's actually pretty interesting to see. Um, and the weirdest sensation about this was the sense that as I'm walking out of the movie theater, I knew when I walked into the movie theater where I was. I had no sense of confusion of that. I was at a movie theater near a major university center in New York, and I walked in, sat down, they aired a trailer for Frozen 2, and I'm watching this documentary, or this, let's call it a documentary, it's a documentary, um, about penguins, and I am leaving the theater... And my first thought that entered my head as I'm leaving is, oh, I'm going to be walking through the gift shop now. Because this documentary is filmed exactly like any of those things you would see at Disney, at Disneyland, Disney World, or anything like that. Where, in the Animal Kingdom, where it's like, here's something about animals, and then you're going to walk through, you can, here's a gift shop having to do with that animal. And it, I don't know how they managed to do that, or if it's just the same crew that does both. Um, but it's really interesting. The cinematography is phenomenal in this movie, and the soundtrack is very good. There's, a, there's an orchestral soundtrack, uh, a score, and then there's also uh, licensed music. Um, they have White Snake at the end of it. It's, it's a very, it's 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 very, uh, not totally jarring because that the, the jarring has a negative connotation. But I would say it's uh, it's a tonal shift to the to what it is, but it's it's uh, it, it's amusing. Uh, when, uh, the, the, the main, pe- apparently, from what I saw in the beginning of the movie, where they aired this thing, it's like, you were seeing a Disney nature production, and it's like, we do this, and this, and this, and it's like, because you're seeing it, you're gonna help to preserve penguins all over the United States, which that alone is probably worth the ticket price anyway, or not all over the United States, that was really stupid to me, all over the country, which doesn't correct it in any way. I am very tired today, um, uh, all over the world, that's it. That's what I'm referring to. Um, you're going to help penguins all over the world uh, preserve their habitats and, you know, all that stuff. But that alone, that's that's a good use of, you know, Earth Day time. It's only an hour and 15, this documentary. documentary it's pretty short. Um, so when they do that, it's like you saw, and it's like they're, they're talking about the, the, the chimpanzee one where it's like the, they named the monkey, they named the, the, the chimp, they named the... Uh, the African cats, they named those, the pandas, they named the pandas. Uh, I'm assuming it's a similar format each time, where you're following a narrative journey with this animal. Um, my problem with this one is, while watching it, I, I, this kind of arose to me as I was watching it. Um, they could have swapped out the penguins at any point in this, and I would have had no idea. And that's not uh, anything about the, uh, the the storytelling or anything like that. It's that, uh, I, I think it has to do with, with the topic here, is that, like, you're gonna do this, and it's like, yeah, we're, we're, you've managed to get me invo- emotionally invested in one fucking penguin, or, or at most four fucking penguins, and you, you've gotten me emotionally invested in these four fucking penguins' survival, which is something that, it, it, it takes a lot to do, because it's, they're four fucking penguins in all of Antarctica, and you have me here rooting for them to live, and rooting for them to, you know, get through, and... Uh, get from one end of the ice to the other without getting eaten by a leopard seal, and it's like, it's a fucking penguin. 
and 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 you you've done a good job getting me to to care about this one penguin. And I would like to point out this movie is rated G, and it's probably my most the most times I've swore an episode in a long time. Um, it's, it's it's a fucking penguin now. That that's the that, at at the end of the day, it's a fucking penguin, and you got me. <laughs> You got me emotionally invested in whether or not this penguin lived, which takes a lot to do considering the circumstances. Um, now, I think a lot of that goes to the portrayal of the penguin because it's narrated by Ed Helms, uh, who you may know as Andy from The Office. Um, also, he was in um, Hangover. He was in um, a few of those other like comedies from that time period. Um, Look at the Mooseport, and you know. There are others that I'm not remembering. Maybe I'm misremembering about Welcome to Mooseport. I don't know. Someone will correct me. Um, but he was he was in a bunch of comedy. He's 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 the voice he's the narrator for the documentary, but he's also the voice of the penguin. Um, and he he the penguin's name is Steve, and he's uh, he's Steve's inner monologue because you know as he's thinking he's like oh, excuse me he's, he's tripping over the lip. No one saw that. Okay, we're gonna move on. Um, and, and it makes it that that's what makes it, it you're humanizing the penguin, which is what makes the audience you know care about what the penguin's doing. You're attributing human thoughts to the penguin, and now we can we can relate to that. We can we uh, we can we can see ourselves in the penguin as odd of a thing that that is. Um, so it it's a it, it's actually a pretty entertaining hour and fifteen to see. I mean. It's not like, and the thing is too, it's not like a dog's journey or like, uh, um, uh, look who's talking, where it's like, it feels out of place, the baby is thinking and talking out loud, and same thing with the dog and, um, a dog's purpose or a dog's journey or whatever the hell it is, um, but that's, this actually feels like, it feels natural. Because it, it, it's like the dog isn't getting attributed these high concepts of reincarnation. or I mean, the penguin isn't getting reincarnation. It's not getting these high science fiction concepts. It's not having to be attributed these these broad moral strokes. It's just fundamentally, here's what the penguin's got to do. The penguin's got to go, to the, uh, go uh, get laid, go to the ocean, get food, throw up the food so the baby can eat it, keep the baby alive. Baby's now alive. Get the baby to the ocean. That's the end of it. And it, it's, they're not trying to attribute it anything higher than that. That's what the peng and penguins do have a, um, a closer knit family unit than a lot of animals, especially birds. Um, so I, I, I think it's interesting. It, it's a very interesting thing, but it's not very informative. So if you're looking for something informative, maybe go, you know, rent March of the Penguins, um, because that's to tell you more about penguins. This is more of an entertaining story following one penguin and his his penguin wife. As you you see him do penguin things for an hour and fifteen. I mean, a good amount of the hour fifteen is establishing shots of penguins running. I mean, what more can you pay? Like it, it, it's worth. It. I saw it in IMAX. Granted, I also have AMC A list, so I I don't pay um, each time I go. I pay once a month, and I can go as many times uh, three times a week. So. I get to see this, and I feel like this movie's gonna be largely, uh, swallowed up, um, because there's another sizable IMAX release this week, um, uh, with, uh, Avengers Endgame dropping on Thursday, um, so this is probably just gonna be swallowed up in the, uh, in the grand scheme of things, a lot of people are gonna forget about this one, but if you get the opportunity to see another movie this week before you see Endgame, which I feel like everyone and their mother's gonna see Endgame at this point, um, this is definitely worth your time. It's a very entertaining movie. It's it's short. That that seventy five minute movie is something that's not quite been as a need that we have as America as Americans to have a short movie that's not gonna upset our entire fucking day. This movie delivers on that. Um, I got in at five. I was out at six uh, six thirty. Glorious. They didn't overload it. You're not sitting here for three. Like it's not like Fahrenheit eleven nine. Where you're sitting here for like the mo- waiting for the movie to end and the movie ends four times. You're like, all right, this fucking ended already. Let's let's go on from here. Um, and yet, this movie about fucking penguins does exactly what you needed to. Um, so yeah, so we'll wrap up there for today. I have one other movie before Endgame coming. Um, I have Teen Spirit on Tuesday. After that, Thursday, I will be seeing Endgame at six thirty. So I will be out of Endgame. 
at 10. Because that movie is three hours long. And you can you can guarantee every movie they can possibly put before it is going to have a trailer there. Um, the entire reason why Rise of Skywalker got a trailer before uh, at Star Wars Celebration so I can air it before um, Endgame. Um, Dark Phoenix is going to have its, tra its trailer airing there. Um, Frozen 2 is going to have its trailer. Lion King, Aladdin. Um, anything that they can throw a trailer for in front of this to get you to go and see it, they're going to throw it in there. Um, I have yet to experience the Dolby Cinema at my new th at my theater. It's a new thing they just installed. It looks really cool, but I wasn't going to go and see uh, The Curse of the Horror Movie. Um, I, 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 I'm not going to, I'm going to see, I'm probably going to end up seeing Endgame for the third time um, when I see, when I experience the, the, the Dolby Cinema thing. Um, I'll probably go like middle of the week, um, the week after and see what that's all about. Um... Because the only screen that had seats open on Thursday night in that was uh, 10 o'clock. And I didn't want to go 10 o'clock to midnight and then... Well, 10 o'clock to 1 in the morning and then have to record an episode then. And that would and then the next day go at 9 to see it with my brother. And that would have just been awful. Um, so I'm just going I'm to... I'm not a glutton for punishment. So I'm going to go at 6, see it in 3D, then go home, take a nap. What the fuck is that guy doing? I record when I do this episode, this show. I record it in my car from a parking lot near uh, my movie theater. Um, usually, so I, right now I'm sitting in this parking lot recording this episode on my phone, and I'm watching a guy go full back, uh, full reverse at 30 miles per hour on a main road in the, the main traffic lane. It's bizarre. Anyway, um, completely off topic. Uh, Disney Nature Penguins. Um, if you have the opportunity to see this movie, if you need a movie to see with a kid, 100% this is worth it because it's, it's a it's a nature documentary that kind of, I want to say Disneyizes it, where it takes away a lot of the teeth, no pun intended, um, where the amount of animals that are actually harmed while watching it is minimal. I think there's like one egg gets massacred and one penguin dies and that's it. Um, it's it, But it, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, it, it, it's fun to watch. It's... It's cute and it's entertaining. I mean, what more can you want from a penguin documentary besides cute and entertaining? Because, I mean, it, it's they're, they're fucking penguins. Um, so we'll wrap up there for today. Um, we'll be back on Tuesday with Teen Spirit, I think the movie is car called. Um, and then we'll be back on um, Thursday with Avengers Endgame. Um, holy crap. Uh, so, yeah, have a great rest of your week.